Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will introduce the Kashmir element of a representation. Uh, then we will use that to prove actually the complete reducibility of any finite dimensional representation of SLM. So, we will actually give details only for the uh, Lie algebra SLN and of course, uh, the arguments that we are giving here, all the arguments actually works for any semi-simple Lie algebras modulo the Cartan criterions of uh, solubility okay, that we will be needing in order to prove some actions are actually not 0. So, let us uh, just recall what we know about uh, uh, SLN. So, if I take the Lie algebra to be SLN, then we know that this is a simple Lie algebra. So, this is something we already proved. So, in particularly, if I take the ideal inside SLN, then this ideal either 0 or it is full. Okay, these are all the only ideals. So, now uh, let us take a representation. So, take pi being a representation of this SLN. Okay. So, let us take V being a finite dimensional representation. So, now we want to actually associate a Cosmere element uh, which we defined earlier in the universal MP algebra. More or less, we want to actually kind of uh, define very similar element. So, if you think about it, uh, there are very many uh, like close relationships are there for Cosmere element of representation and Cosmere element that we defined on defined in the universal NP algebra, but it is it will be easier to define it for the representation and work with that. So, let us take uh, this representation ok, then as before uh, we can actually uh, define this trace form. Uh, associated with this representation. So, that is going to give you. So, if we take this trace form, so which is the trace of pi of x pi of y for x y inside your g, then we already seen that this is going to give you g invariant symmetric and then bilinear form on G. Okay. So, we want to actually prove that this is indeed non-degenerate form. Okay. So, V is not necessarily irreducible module. You, we are actually taking any uh, finite dimensional representation and then looking at its trace form. And then for, for any representation, we proved that it must be G invariant, symmetric and bilinear. And now, we want to claim that this is indeed non-degenerate form. Okay. How one can observe this? So, we can actually prove that uh, the radical of this representation is 0. Okay. Let us call that radical being RAD beta. So, this is by definition, this is those x and g such that whenever you compute beta of x y, that should be 0 or for all y inside g. So, basically those elements that are orthogonal to all the elements of g. And since uh, beta is g invariant, one can actually prove that this is indeed ideal inside your g. Okay. So, how one can prove? So, let us take x inside the radical and then y inside your Lie algebra. Okay. So, then just compute what is bracket x y. Okay. So, then you can see that the beta of the bracket x y z is going to be beta of x comma the bracket y z. So, this is coming from the invariance. Okay. So, but the beta of x comma anything is 0 for all elements of g. So, in particularly the beta of x comma bracket y z is, is 0. So, this proves that the bracket, so this is true for all z in g. So, that means the, the bracket x y is again element inside your radical. So, that makes the radical being ideal inside G. 
So now there are only two choices for this ideal because g being simple Lie algebra either it can be 0 or full. So let us see what happens when it is full. Okay. If the radical of this is full then you can easily see that. Okay. So this pi that we have started with. So this being okay, we, we have to take some non-trivial representation non-trivial representation otherwise everything just collapses because the all pi of x will be 0 this beta will become 0. So, if you take a non-trivial representation then you can easily see that the kernel pi that being ideal okay, the kernel pi being ideal inside g forces that the kernel pi is indeed trivial. So, then since g being simple Lie algebra if you start with a non-trivial representation then we get uh, this faithful representation. So, then that forces that pi being just uh, injective. Okay. If pi is injective then what will happen pi of SLN or g will be isomorphic to SLN. Okay. But note that if you take this radical of beta if you use Cartan's criteria for solubility. Okay. So, this is the block box that we are going to actually just state it here. So, basically the Cartan criterion simply states that the radical of beta must be soluble. Okay. Cartan's criteria for solubility tells you that Okay. This radical of beta must be soluble. So, take it as a block box, it is a, it's a criterion just immediately tells you that this is soluble, but SLN is not soluble, it is a simple Lie algebra. Okay. We will have a contradiction. So, that forces that the radical of beta must be 0. So, since the radical of beta is 0, so that forces that beta is non-degenerate. Okay. So, this cannot happen. So, beta is non-degenerate. So, we will actually uh, later uh, classify all irreducible representation of SLN using uh, highest weight theory. So, there we will actually uh, tell you like how to construct uh, given irreducible representation that corresponds to a highest weight lambda very explicitly using uh, construction of uh, this Verma. Okay. So, it will be realized as quotient of Verma modules. So, from that information one will be able to actually uh, calculate how the Casimir element act on any given irreducible representation. And we will prove that Casimir element that we constructed in the earlier class that will act as a non-zero scalar on given irreducible finite dimensional representation of SLN. And that fact also can be used to prove the, prove the complete reducibility. Okay. That is actually that gives different proof in some sense. But here we are actually using Cartan's criteria to say that this beta is non-degenerate because beta is non-degenerate is important to actually construct the dual basis for given basis of G and that is used in the computation of Casimir element. Okay. So, this approaches somewhat uses this block box uh, Cartan's criteria which can be avoided later once we classify all the irreducible repre finite dimensional representation of SLM. Okay. I will actually outline the proof when the when we do that classification. So, now uh, we have proved that uh, we have this uh, representation which is uh, sorry we have this uh, trace form which is non-degenerate. So, now what we can do as before in the construction of Casimir element we can actually take a basis of G which is SLN and then you can actually take the dual basis with respect to the beta dual basis with respect to beta. 
So, now you can see that okay, every all the calculation that we did uh, just goes through. So, in particularly beta of x i y j becomes delta i j. So, now you can construct this c pi beta which is Casimir element, Casimir element of course of pi. So, then this is by definition is summation pi of x i pi of pi i. Okay. So, we used actually uh, the natural okay, embedding of g inside u g to define actually Casimir element inside the center of u g. Here we are using the just a representation to define this. Okay. So, note that this beta is different from uh, the killing form. Okay. So, here in this construction, okay, the Casimir element that lies inside the center, we use the killing form as the non-degenerate form. But here we are using different beta that comes from the representation. Even though it comes from some general representation, you can see that because we are working with SLN, all these non-degenerate forms, okay, G invariant forms, we already proved it is one dimensional. So, beta will differ by that uh, killing form kappa by a scalar some lambda. Okay. So, we know that beta will be some a times kappa of s n. So, now because of that the dual basis that you are going to write here y 1 etcetera y n that will have very close relationship with the dual basis that comes from the kappa. I will leave it to you to think about it what it is. So, that way you can see that this c pi beta has close relationship between the Casimir element that we defined in the last class. So, now what will be the trace of this c pi beta? So, this is the computation that we need and you can easily see that this is exactly the because we are using the trace form the trace of c pi beta is nothing but the trace of pi of x i pi of y i which is exactly summation beta of x i y i where I range from 1 to n. So, which is exactly the summation delta i i which is the dimension of the Lie algebra. Okay. So, in particularly the trace of c pi beta is given by the dimension of g. So, what it proves? Dimension g is non-zero number. So, that forces that c pi beta is non-trivial map on capital V. Okay. Because all these are lying inside endomorphism of V. So, you can see that c pi beta is indeed non-trivial. The earlier computation indeed says for any x in g c pi beta pi of x indeed commutes and this tells you that c pi beta is a map from v to v which is a g module map. Okay. So, given any representation capital V finite dimensional representation of SLN we constructed a g module map from v to v whose action we do not know, but still we can say that the trace of that is exactly the dimension g. So, it is a non-trivial g module map from v to v. Okay. This is the observation that we have made. So, now what happens if v is irreducible? If v is irreducible, so then we know that the c pi beta because being c module map uh, sorry g module map. So, this must be some scalar times identity on v, but we already calculate the trace. The trace is nothing but dimension g. So, if you calculate trace on both side, so one side you get dimension g on the other side you get a times dimension v. So, in particularly you know what is a, a is dimension g divided by dimension v. So, it says that 
c pi beta it is not just scalar times identity the scalar is a rational number which is given by dimension g divided by dimension v and then it is that multiple of identity. So, even though in the construction of this map c pi beta uses the basis x i and y i at the end when it acts on the irreducible representation it does not see the basis. Okay. So, that means this is independent of the basis that we have chosen independent of the basis x 1 etc x m. So, that means this Casimir element that we constructed of this representation is just independent and it is scalar multiple of this identity. Okay, so, we, we have developed enough uh, results in order to prove complete reducibility. So, let us actually just state and prove complete reducibility complete reducibility of finite dimensional representations of SLN. Okay. So, how one can actually prove this? So, we are going to actually set up induction. So, there are many steps involved. So, let me try to actually uh, do step by step. So, let us start with the finite dimensional representation, okay. let us call it pi. So, it is uh, it is important to actually kind of write down the representation as a map from G to G L of V because we also will talk about that Casimir element and so on. So, you have the representation. So, now what we want to prove, okay. if V is irreducible then there is nothing to prove. We want to prove that uh, V can be written as direct sum of irreducible finite dimensional modules. So, V you start with finite dimensional G, rep G representation or module. Okay. So, now without loss of generality one can assume that V is not irreducible. So, we can actually take uh, some irreducible sorry some sub module. Okay. So, first what we will do we can we just say that we can assume uh, this following situation. So, that will be the case 1. So, we will end of the day we will actually say that we can reduce to this case. The very first case that we want to consider we have a sub module okay, G sub module of V which has co dimension 1. So, we know that there is a G sub module, but we are just uh, taking the case where we have G sub module which has the co dimension 1. Okay. So, then we can see that V modulo W, so the dimension of this is just 1. Okay. And it is simple exercise, so let me just state it here. So, SLN acts trivially on any one dimensional module. Okay. So, if we you take it to be one dimensional module then SLN must act trivially that is because the bracket of SLN SLN is exactly SLN because of that. Okay. So, this is just take it as exercise, it is a very simple exercise. So, we already have uh, this trivial uh, one dimensional representation, okay. let us denote it by C. So, this is the trivial one dimensional representation and this exercise tells you that all one dimensional representations are trivial. So, without loss of generality we can just use that as notation. So, basically what we are saying V modulo W as a G module isomorphic to the trivial representation. So, this statement can be reinterpreted using the exact sequence as follows. You have W and then you have this inclusion map from W to V and then you have the quotient map from V to V modulo W 
which is you can denote it by C because it is a trivial representation and you have this exact sequence of G modules. So, basically what we want to say, we want to say that this sequence splits. Okay. So, first reduction that we want to make. Okay. So, by induction on the dimension of W, we want to reduce to the case W being irreducible. So, this is the reduction. Okay. So, by induction on the dimension of W, we can assume that W is irreducible. Okay, let us see why we can actually assume this. So, in case if it is not irreducible, then what will happen? So, you have the exact sequence like this and W is not irreducible. So, this is actually nothing to do with uh, uh, Lie algebra representation theory. So, these kind of arguments actually works for any representations, okay, any finite dimensional representations. So, you can actually take W dash which is proper inside W and uh, this is just uh, uh, like kind of sub module. Okay. Because W being uh, not irreducible, then we can always have something like this. Then immediately we can actually fo form this following exact sequence. V modulo W dash modulo W modulo W dash which is naturally isomorphic to V modulo W which is naturally isomorphic to C. Okay. Maybe I will write it in the bracket. So, you have this following exact sequence. You can see that the dimension of uh, either the middle module or the left module it all goes down. So, that means by induction we can assume that this is uh, this sequence actually splits. So, it is a sequence of uh, G modules. So, by induction we can assume that this splits. So, we have V modulo W dash which is exactly equal to W modulo W dash direct sum some W tilde modulo W dash. Okay. There exists W tilde which is complement of W modulo W dash. This decomposition as G modules. Okay. So, now this W tilde is there. Look at W tilde. You will see that W dash is contained in W tilde. So, then you can just look at W tilde modulo W dash. So, you have this another sequence of exact sequence of G modules. So, note that the dimension of this is just a dimension of this minus this, so which is uh, 1, okay. because the dimension of this W tilde modulo W dash is same as V modulo W dash modulo W W modulo W dash. So, this is the as dimension 1. So, that means this is also you can identify with C. So, we have very similar exact sequence. So, by induction we can say that this splits. So, that means there exists G sub module capital X such that W tilde is equal to W dash direct sum X for some G sub module X of W tilde. Okay. This is by induction by induction. So, now you have this another X. So, now how to combine them together? Okay, it is a simple exercise now to put all them together. See, we have started with W and then which sits inside V, you have V modulo W and then you have taken this W dash which sits inside W. 
So, then you looked at this V modulo W and then you said that the complement of that is just W tilde modulo W dash. Now, when you look at W tilde, then you this is split into W direct sum sorry W dash uh, direct sum X. So, then it is easy to see what will be the complement of W inside V. Okay. So, the V is going to be exactly W direct sum. So, if you count the dimension of X, the dimension of X is dimension of W tilde W W dash. So, this has dimension 1. So, this has dimension 1. So, basically that will be the complement that you are looking for. Okay. So, this is true as G models. So, now in this entire argument you have not used any theory of uh, uh, representation theory of Lie algebras. So, these arguments hold in general. Okay. So, this actually kind of tells you that you can reduce to the case where uh, this uh, W being irreducible. So, now we can assume that W is irreducible sub module of capital V and we have this sh short exact sequence and we are just assuming it has co dimension 1. So, these are all the now assumption. Okay. So, now look at this representation pi which is uh, representation of G to G L of V. Now, I can construct C pi which is C let us say. So, I know that trans uh, the trace of C pi is dimension of G, in particular it is non G. So, you can look at this C pi which is a map from V to V. Now, C pi is given by what? Summation pi of x i pi of y i if you remember. Then C pi is a G model map. So, C pi maps W to W. Okay. So, that is uh, clear, but if you actually uh, uh, think about it since V modulo W is trivial, V modulo W is trivial, the C pi of W should be sorry C pi of V itself should be mapped to W because if I take C pi of sorry pi of x of any capital V that should okay sorry any element of capital V that should be lying inside W. That is the meaning of saying that G acts trivially on this uh, V model W. So, so we have the following information C pi which is a G module map and C pi of V is contained in W. So, now we can restrict C pi to W and then see what happens. Okay. And it has to be scalar multiple of identity of W. So, let us say C pi acts as some B times scalar times uh, identity of on W. Why that is the case using the Schur's lemma W being irreducible C pi being G model we get this. Now, we claim that the B must be non-zero. So, if it is not 0 then what will happen? If B is non-zero then C pi restricted to W becomes 0, but already C pi maps V to W. So, this will force the trace of C pi is 0 which is a contradiction because the trace is indeed the dimension g which is non zero that forces that b is non zero once we know b is non zero then we see that c pi restricted to w is exactly so up to like b inverse of this is identity w okay so now if i take the kernel of this c pi which is same as the kernel of b inverse of c pi so this is going to be the complement of W complement of W. So, it is exercise simple exercise. 
So, simple exercise that V is equal to W direct sum kernel of C pi. Okay. So, in this case we have the result using the Casimir operator, but how one can reduce the general case to this particular sub case? So, that is just to use some homological ideas. Okay. So, again look at the short exact sequence. Okay. So, we want to reduce to the case where w being co dimension 1. So, v is not being irreducible, we always have w some sub module. So, let w be a g sub module of capital V and not necessarily one co dimension 1, okay. not necessarily co dimension 1 because we are dealing with the general case. Now, in this scenario what we can do? So, we can construct the following spaces. Okay. First of all note that the home v comma w, so this is a g module. So, we take this exact sequence and then we produce a new exact sequence of sub modules of this space home v comma w whose splitting basically okay, we will construct this co dimension 1 module. Okay. We, we want to construct something like this. We will construct w v c 0 and w being okay, inside v inside the home v comma w and this has let us say co dimension 1 and we construct something like this. We just proved that such sequence splits, the splitting of the sequence will tell you that splitting of this sequence. So, that is the main idea and if you just work it out the details then you will know that how naturally one can define these spaces. So, let me just define those spaces. So, you take this uh, script V to be those maps from home v comma w such that when you restrict this map to w then it becomes some scalar times identity for some scalar times identity. So, I will leave it to you to check it is indeed a sub module it is not very hard and then you can define this w script w this is those f in v such that when you restrict it to w it becomes 0. And since f restricted to w is scalar times identity on w and this script w is actually those f such that f restricted w is 0, then it is easy to see that this has co dimension 1 inside v. So, I will leave it to you to check both v are g sub modules of home v comma w. Okay. So, recall that uh, what is the action. So, if I take x in g f in the home v comma w then x dot f defined on v is nothing but x dot of f of v minus sorry f of uh, x dot v. Okay. So, that is the definition of uh, that is the definition of the action. Okay. So, now if you take this action you can see that this f being g module map okay, which is denoted by home g of v comma w if and only if x dot f is 0. So, this is very simple observation. This is more or less by definition because this being 0 same as saying that f commutes with the action of x for all x. Okay. So, that means in order to get g module map all you need to look for actually some element that is uh, invariant vector that means the action of g kills. To get that invariant vector 
you can actually look at this particular sequence and then see that once the sequence splits you will get that invariant vector because that invariant vector will come from this one dimensional trivial representation which is the complement of this w inside v okay so i will leave it to check that you write v as w direct sum some cf then f restricted to w must be a times some identity on w with a non zero then it's clear that f is inside the home gvw and the kernel of f is the complement direct sum w is exactly v okay this has g modules so this is not very hard to prove once we establish that this w has complement inside v the script w has complement inside script v then it's clear that this small w also has complement inside v whose complement is given by the kernel of this uh, non zero map that is there in this one dimensional trivial representation okay this is this actually completes the proof of complete reducibility again uh, as i said before the action of the casimir element uh, on given representation used very much so later we will actually compute the action of casimir element uh, Uh, very explicitly on given irreducible representation and then see it must act non as non zero scalar and then we will also use that to give another proof of this complete reducibility okay i will stop here uh, we will continue in the next class those things thank you